Kevin Murray. Thank you very much. Uh, just so you all know, I'm the most socially awkward person in the world. And um, yeah, uh, that's this is going to be fun. Make sure you ask questions so it doesn't get really, really awkward. No worries. No worries. So I will be in the jerk that steals the first question. Okay. While I'm stealing the first question, y'all can line up behind the lovely microphone over there. And then once he's done answering my question, you guys can go to town. So my first question is the biggest one. J.K. Rowling called you a traitor. <laughs> yeah, she called me out the other day. Uh, somebody was asking me what they should wear coming to this convention. <clears throat> and they were like, well, should I wear Slytherin or Gryffindor? And I was like, Slytherin, of course. And then J.K. Rowling sent me a tweet calling me a traitor. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Uh, no, I think it's a bit of fun. Like, I've always been a Slytherin. Uh, I done the Pottermore like years ago when it first came out, and I was a Slytherin then, and I've stuck by it. So, yeah. So, how was it being playing a Gryffindor, being a Slytherin at heart? It was okay. I always said uh, Seamus should have been an undercover spy for Slytherin. <laughs> but uh, J.K. Rowling never took that on. <laughs> well, he had the explosive personality for it. He did, and like. I just love everything about Slytherin. Like, they're such cool <laughs> characters. Like, Malfoy is just incredible. I can't judge you on that. No. He's adorable. He is. Man, I know he's not adorable. He's manly. Manly. He's not adorable. He's manly adorable. What? Why not both? Okay, both. <laughs> we can go with that. All right, let's open up for the first questions. Okay, um, so, oh, that's very brave. Um, <laughs> Burns. <laughs> How do you think I feel sitting with all these in front of me? <laughs> so, um, I think this goes for many fandoms, not just the Harry Potter fandom, but a lot of the time there are characters that are never explicitly together in the story. It's never outright said. You know where I'm going. I know where um, you're going. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of just accepted by the fans of, like, it's a thing. I don't care what the author yeah. says, it's a thing. Uh, I was wondering if you felt that that was the case for Seamus and Dean. Yeah, like I always said. Oh, I, thank God. I, 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 <laughs> I was really scared to ask this, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> no, you see, last year in Ireland we had the referendum for gay marriage. So I, I always supported it, and Yay. the day that it passed, <laughs> I put up a tweet saying, from today, Seamus and Dean could have got married. Oh. Um, and then just, you know, just I went insane, no. and I couldn't get back on Twitter again. It was just ridiculous. <laughs> I couldn't see anything. So uh, Dean was, was trending online worldwide and everything, <laughs> which is pretty cool. But no, I always thought, look, I roll with it. And, that scene at the Yule Ball, like you two dancing together, I was like, oh my oh, god, that was help, it. help. <laughs> yeah, no, we danced with everybody. Uh, yeah, while we were filming the fourth movie, we had uh, like eight weeks of learning how to dance. <laughs> and it was really, really fun. So there was like a competition between all of us to see who was the best. In fairness, I wasn't that bad. I was quite good. I was one of the best. And I'm not going to tell you who was the worst. <laughs> I'll just tell you that they're twins. They've got twins their hair. So I didn't tell you who they were, but I think you might know who I'm talking about. Awesome, thank you. No problem. Yeah, go Demas. Hi. Wow, that's Hello. really bright. Yep. Um, so it's been a while since you've been a part of like doing the... Like, it's been years since the last Harry Potter movie came out and um, just kind of wondering how you're feeling about the franchise expanding into like Fantastic Beasts and The Cursed Child and things like that. I'm so pissed off, I'm not in them. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, why? No, I, I think it's really cool. Uh, I just read The Cursed Child last week when I was flying over to Australia and Spoilers. I thought it was really, really good. Mm -hmm. Like on Twitter, I was kind of like, will I read it, won't I read it? People were saying that it was really, really bad, and some people were saying it was the best thing ever. So I was kind of like, will I, won't I? I had 24 hours to kill on an airplane. So I was like, no better time to do it then. If it's terrible, I've just been on a plane doing nothing anyway. <laughs> so, and if it's good, it was good. And it was, I, I really enjoyed it. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the play. That'll be cool. And the movie, I'm just buzzing to see. Because Colin Farrell is in it as well. 
which makes it even better. Another <laughs> Irish man. <laughs> awesome, thank you. No problem. Uh, hi. How's it going? Very good, thank you. Um, who was the most fun to work with on the set? None of them, they're all terrible. <laughs> I hated them all. Yes, yes we can tell. <laughs> nah, they were great. Uh, we all got on like so well. We all started when we were 11. You well, some of us started in around 10, 11, 12. I was 11 when I started. And it was just like being in school, like with your best pals. From day one, we got on so well. We went all, like we went in, we done our read through. Everything was great. And we just went off like exploring the studios. So we just kind of got up to no good. And we went into places where we were not allowed to go. <laughs> so the studios that we were filming in was an old World War II aircraft hangar. And they used to hold like all the, the bombs and everything there. So we were like, that's really, really cool. Let's go explore. So we went down like all these crazy tunnels. And with that, like loads of the producers and everything come chasing us saying, get out of there, get out of there, get out of there. <laughs> we're like, okay. And they were saying like, but underneath the runway, like from uh, the main studio and the other studio, there was a, uh, they said there was explosives underneath it. And we're like, shit. <laughs> Now we really want to go down, but uh, I don't actually think there was explosives down there. I just think they said that to kind of scare us. <laughs> no, it kind of didn't scare us. We were more intrigued and wanted to go there even more. But it's your thing. You're shameless. Well, that's it. No, that would have been bad going up. <laughs> There'd be no Harry Potter. I'd, I'd be dead. <laughs> like just doing it in a movie and then just doing it for real life. <laughs> Hello. So I think you know my question already, which is basically, what are you up to now? Or if you don't want to say what you're up to, what would you like to be up to? Uh, well, at the moment, I'm uh, in Canada. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you guys laugh at everything. <laughs> this is so good. That's because they love you. <laughs> they can't even understand me. <laughs> uh, no, so after Harry Potter, I want to get back to normality be myself again like I spent 11 years I, I started Harry Potter when I was 11 I finished when I was 22 so half of my life was spent on the Harry Potter sets uh, I didn't get to see my dad a whole lot I'd fly over to the UK every Sunday and I'd fly home every Friday so I didn't see my dad I got to see my dad for like two days and that was it every week so it was, I wanted to get back to see him I wanted to see all my friends and also I love horses so when I was like 10 11 I got into horses and I started competing, show jumping, and then I bought a really nice little pony. We went off, we won like two big shows one day, and it was in the papers, Harry Potter star trades broomstick for horses. <laughs> <laughs> and Warner Brothers seeing that, they're like, Devon, you gotta give up. So lucky, I was very fortunate that I was able to uh, buy myself like a small yard and I could keep my horses, and I could buy new horses. So when Harry Potter finished, I kind of wanted to get back to those, and just in, enjoy it and I can go out competing again, I can buy horses, I can sell horses and it's just really really fun. We also rescue a few horses every year from like the meat factory and just people that are absolute assholes. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of what I do now. And I, to be honest, I didn't want to really get back into acting. But no, it's not that I didn't want to get back into acting, I was just enjoying my life again. But in the last little while, I've done maybe a few of these convention things and Robert England, who plays Freddy Krueger, he was talking to me last week. Actually, it was really weird. I'll tell you something about him. So, <laughs> sorry, I'm just going to go off on another story. Uh, so, I've known Robert like for years and years and years, and he's a lovely man. But I've always been terrified of him, like growing up, as most people have. So he came over to me there last weekend, and he was like, "Hey, Devon, I had a dream about you last night." <laughs> Kruger just had a dream about me. I've had nightmares over you for like all my childhood. So like, that freaked the shit out of me. But uh, he's been kind of like at me to do like get back into acting again. He's obsessed with Peaky Blinders on Netflix. And he was like, dude, like you've got to be in Peaky Blinders. And he's been kind of sowing the oats that, like the last couple of weeks and months. So like he's kind of got me hooked again. And he's working so much as well. He's like, Dude, it's so much fun, I'm having a great time, and you're missing out. <laughs> so, yeah, I kind of want to get back into that now as well. 
So, we'll see. Well. Fingers crossed. I might get a movie with horses or something like that, and I'd be sorted. <laughs> go to the Olympics or something. You know? Sorry? Go to the Olympics or something. You could do like show jumping for real. Well, that's it exactly. Yeah. My friend was actually, well, years ago in 2004, my trainer won the gold medal in Athens, and then got it taken off him, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, then he went back in 2012, and he won this. Was it silver or bronze? And that didn't get taken off. So it was a real up yours. <laughs> and then this year we had a friend of mine as well, Greg. He went off and jumped. Uh, he wouldn't be like used to jumping those big classes. Well, he would be, but he hasn't got the experience that like some of our other riders have. He went over. He did a great job. He just very, very unfortunate that he didn't come home with a medal. But yeah, that's what I want to do. I love. That's one of my main goals. It's like breed a horse that is that'll go and jump the Olympics. That was like my main goal in life. Thanks. No problem. Whoa, that's... <laughs> I know, I'm like the fifth person too. Um, I'm about to destroy a lot of people's childhoods here. Uh, say, for example, it's like 20 years later and Seamus is like... I know, he's gotten... He's grown old and he has a chip on his shoulder and he's like pissed off at the world or something. He decides to become a terrorist because, you know, he's skilled in blowing... He could. Yeah, because he's skilled in blowing shit up, right? So, uh, what do you think would be the first national monument that he would go blow up if he had the chance? <laughs> the spire in Dublin. Like... <laughs> it's terrible. I don't know why they don't even build that. That's going to be blown up first and foremost. <laughs> you know, I, I have a number of Irish friends who share the exact same opinion as you. Yeah, like they spend like obscene hundreds of million quid on this needle. That's like <laughs> thousands and thousands of feet high. And it's just silly and pointless and nothing to do with Ireland whatsoever. And just, yeah. You know, um, I will share a personal opinion. Uh, one monument here in Canada that I don't wouldn't miss if he blew up would be the CN Tower, honestly. All right. Oh, I think he would do a good job at that. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to be a terrorist. Just to put it out there. I don't intend on blowing anything up. Nobody does. Well, thank you very much. No problem, buddy. I've never been asked that question before. Yeah. <laughs> so, good job. How do you blow things up? <laughs> I've seen a common theme today. <laughs> it's magic. Just gone very, very badly wrong. Yeah, I saw you in one of the pictures you signed. You blew up, I saw a little fire. And then you were like, like, what the? <laughs> I just saw your face like, like a marshmallow that's roasted. So, <laughs> yeah, poor Seamus was just terrible. He couldn't do anything right. Uh, and he got to blow up a hell of a lot of times. Which was, no, I'm not going to say it was fun. Because the very first day was terrible. So it was my 13th birthday when I was in Professor Flitwick's class doing the Wingardium Leviosa. And everything was great. What they done is they had like, a rig and they had like a small little box they put in like 24 bulbs from the one flash bulb like the old cameras and we were doing like Wingardium Leviosa, Wingardium Leviosa and then bang and with that like all the bulbs just shattered and like went flying at my face and I was like oh my god <laughs> so obviously we didn't use that take and we had to do it again so I'm like Wingardium Leviosa <laughs> And Chris like, no, 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 we'll stop this. And he was like, look, Devin, we'll just keep on running this over and over and over again. And whenever I think you're kind of ready, I just press the button. So it took us like 25 minutes <laughs> before I'd actually relax. And we finally done it and everything was great. And then we just had to do it then like another thousand times. <laughs> and it only blew up, blew up once since, like only one bulb blew up after that. So it was okay. I didn't die. <laughs> um, then I like, like, when you were like blowing up things, I'm like, blue, 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 blue. <laughs> and Harry was, Harry was beside you, and it was, looked so funny, and you and your face were like, blue. <laughs> You're the cutest little thing ever. I know. <laughs> Says, you're cute, you're cute, you're cute, you're cute. I bet especially, they do. yeah, especially my old teacher says, you're cute. You are, you're very cute. I know. Even though I know, I know you. I like her confidence. Yeah, it's amazing. You should be sitting.
standing up here beside us. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Oh my god, your eyes are creepy. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I scared an old guy at a comic book one out there. He was like, oh my god. So <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> yeah. Um, so my auntie's like a huge Harry Potter fan. Like um her son's first two series of words was Harry Potter. In an accent, he's like a little Arabic boy. I don't like so um she'd want me to ask what your favorite scene to like ever do in Harry Potter was. Um That's a hard one. Like I uh, <laughs> I enjoyed doing the youth ball. I got to dance with a very, very pretty girl. So I enjoyed that. Uh, also in the third movie, like the third movie was really kind of pretty dark throughout the whole thing and real depressing. So to do the scene when we're all in the dormitory, like myself, Matthew, Alfie, Dan, and Rupert, and like we have all the sweets and we turn into different animals. That was a cool scene to do. We just went kind of wild and just had real good fun doing it. But the weirdest thing was, I was meant to be a... What was I meant to be? No, I think I was meant to be a chicken. So I'm there, like, doing all my... Bah, 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 bah. And then in the movie, they turn me into a monkey. <laughs> so if, if you watch the movie, I'm doing, like, bok, bok, bok. But it's a monkey noise coming out. It doesn't make sense. And so next time you watch it, look out for that, and you say, ah, now I see. <laughs> Well, that fun, that uh, fun. That scene was pretty good to do. Uh, a fun scene again would have been the very first day we went into the Great Hall scene. Like we were only filming maybe a month at the time, and we never like they wouldn't let us into the Great Hall to see it. They wanted it to be a, a complete surprise for us. So as we we're walking through with McGonagall, that was the first time we ever seen it, and I was just like, "Shit, this place is huge. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so cool. Like all the candles were." floating from the ceiling and it was just amazing. But the worst thing was about filming that, so on the very first day we all had to sit down and all that and everything was going great. We were filming away all day and with that the sound man comes running in, stop, 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 everybody get out. He's like, everyone's like, why is the sound man telling everybody to get out? He could hear pop, 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 pop. All the candles just started falling down on top of all the kids. <laughs> So they were like, yeah, let's clear the area. And then they, they decided then, which was a shame because it looked amazing. They decided then that they just add them in later on, which kind of took away from it for everybody. But uh, yeah, awesome. oh, they, oh, they were all so much fun to film. Thank you. No problem. The Bogart scene as well. That was that was cool. <laughs> Poor Matthew. Alan Rickman coming out to him was just amazing. He was dressed up as the granny. That was insane. He pulled it off. <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are Excellent. you? I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to hear it. Um, I was just wondering, uh, what was it like to work with Emma Watson? <laughs> Emma Watson? Yes. Uh, it was really cool. The very first day I met her, she was like, Oh my god, you're Irish! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Chinese. <laughs> And uh, then she was like, oh my god, will you say three million, th no, what was it, three billion, three million, three hundred and thirty-three thousand and three-thirds? <laughs> I'm like, okay. At the time, like, I had a real, real strong Dublin accent. But I was like, three billion, three million, three thousand and all that. So everything was three instead of three. And she just loved it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she was such a lovely girl. She turned in, like, from day one, she was just amazing. She was fun. She was just genuine and down to earth. And Hi. She was terrible, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, she wasn't. Um, what is your best memory from on set or your funniest memory from on set? <clears throat> okay, uh, I think it was the fifth movie. I could be wrong. Uh, when we're all in the Great Hall in the sleeping bags. Oh my God, my eyes. <laughs> I keep looking at those, I'm blinding myself even more. Because there's one there and it's not fully lit. And it just keeps on catching my eye. But uh, yeah, so we're all in the Great Hall in our sleeping bags. And everything was going great. It was like really late at night. And with that, I was sleeping, like I was lying right next to Dan. So we're like face to face. And halfway through filming, all of a sudden, <laughs> and Dan opens up his eyes and then I open up my eyes because it was coming from Dan. And he's like, 
it's not me, it's not me. I'm like, sure, sure. But Alan Rickman and Michael Gambon had placed a fart machine into Dan's sleeping bag. <laughs> So like, everybody like, so Alan and uh, Michael are still like saying all their dialogue and like with that like the whole great hall just erupts in laughter and it was just, Dan gets up, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, I swear! So that, that was fun to do. And yeah, poor Dan, he was like, he went scarlet red. Like, shit. Uh, like we got up to some fun things as well on set. We'd, uh, what movie? I'm not even sure what movie it was, but my, not Michael Gambon, uh, Robbie Coltrane who played Hagrid. Hagrid. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm jet lagged. I can't even think. <laughs> uh, so Michael Gambon, Michael Gambon. Why am I keep on saying Michael Gambon? <laughs> Robbie Coltrane came in one morning as I was going into hair and makeup, and he's like, Devin, come over here." I'm thinking, what have I done? <laughs> and he's like, "Come here, come here, come here." And he has like a box of band aids, and he's like. Come here, can I put these all over your face and send you into hair and makeup? And I was, I'm like, sure. <laughs> I'm like 11 at the time, so like, Robbie's a big man. <laughs> I'm a short guy, I'm not gonna say no. So he puts them all over my face and all over my arms and sends me into hair and makeup. And I'm like, oh my God, what's happened? What's happened? What's happened? I was like, I fell off a horse. <laughs> like, shit, shit, shit. So like, they're trying to take them off. Like, no, don't take them off, don't take them off. So they get in touch, they call up to uh, the producers and director. Something like, shit, I've just lost my job. I'm in so much trouble. I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to get the sack and I'm starting to sweat. So uh, with that, uh, David Heyman and the rest of the guys all come down like, Devin, what's after happening? What's after happening? I was like, I fell off a horse and I'm really, really sorry. Uh, I'm really sorry. And they're like, we've got to get you to the hospital. We've got to get the medic down here. And I'm thinking, oh my God, and Robbie Coltrane has gone running at this stage. <laughs> Like a little girl, he's like, no, I'm not getting in trouble. <laughs> so like, I'm really, really worried now at this stage. Everybody's around me, and they're going crazy. So with that, like five or ten minutes past, the medic comes down. She wants to take them off, and then Robbie comes in and says, like, "Okay, guys, it wasn't Devin. It was me. I put band-aids all over his face." <laughs> yeah, so I didn't lose my job, thankfully. <laughs> and Robbie manned up and grew a set. <laughs> That, he was a great guy. He was one of my favourites on Harry Potter. Uh, he was just a really, really, really cool guy. Thank you. No problem. Hi. So Hello. I was wondering if, like, when you watch a certain scene, uh, does it make you like cringe or make you go like, "Wow, I was awesome"? Because I know when I film myself and then watch it, I like want to crawl under a rock. Yeah, I'm the same. I hate watching myself back. It's like the worst thing in the world. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just like don't like watching myself. I don't like hearing my voice or anything like that. <laughs> oh. So, although I speak enough, I'm always speaking, but I hate the sound of my voice. Uh, yeah, so I like I just don't like watching anything. <laughs> Not what I mean. Yeah. And the worst was on the very first movie, my voice started to break. Oh. So, I was filming. What, what scene was it? Oh, it was uh, I have rabbit harp swing home. I was saying all that, so it was... <clears throat> I have rabbit, half swing home. Turn this water into rum. <laughs> <laughs> and then I became a man. <laughs> yeah, so uh, they sent me that, they kept that, and they sent it. And they played it at the very last premiere, at the after party. They kind of like, they had a special room for some of us. And like for the cast, we got to watch like old videos, like they had old pictures of us like, bunny ears behind each other and everything like that and yeah they played that and it wasn't embarrassing at all thank you no problem hi hello um i was just wondering back um uh, in when there was the da going on and you were learning how to cast a patronus what do you think seamus thought of when he was trying to cast his first one Seamus is probably thinking, I hope I don't blow shit up again. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Uh, no, I just, I think you'd have been thinking I want something really, really cool. I don't want a salmon. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Because, <laughs> have you seen, like, Ivana Lynch, who plays Luna Lovegood, got a salmon. <laughs> As her Patronus the other day. A salmon. <laughs> really. 
I like other people have like mice and things like that. There's nothing wrong with a salmon. But really a salmon. But like that, if a dementia was coming towards me, I'd say, look, just take me, I'm not in the least like Seriously, just It could yeah. be worse, you could add a goldfish. Is there a goldfish as well? Or at least you could have had one. Yeah, well, hopefully I don't. I'm gonna do I'm gonna go on Pottermore later on or tomorrow. I'm gonna see what I have. Hopefully I've got a horse or a hippogriff or something cool. It's gonna be a salmon. Horse is an option. <laughs> see, I'm so jealous, that's what I want. I want a horse. I don't want a salmon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Hi. How's it going, buddy? Good. Oh, um, what's the worst Harry Potter joke you can think of? <laughs> Here we go. I can't really say it, you're too young. <laughs> Do it! He's old enough. Oh. Uh, do you want to slither into my chamber of secrets? Yeah! <laughs> you just opened up a lot of Harry Potter pickup lines. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, like I hear that the whole time, I'm like, Okay. <laughs> I know you love horses and all, but what was your favorite, what was your favorite creature on set? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, my favorite creature, probably the hippogriff. I thought he was pretty badass. I, I, think he, I thought he was a really cool creature. He was, I think, if I had him in real life, I could go out show jumping. I'd never knock a fence. I could go to the Olympics and win. <laughs> so yeah. I love horses too, I ride I ride him. Oh do you? And what type of riding do you do? Barrel racing. Sorry? Barrel racing. No. Really? But you're so small and like <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> Sorry? She's been doing it since she was two. No way, that's amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. And do you have any pictures? Yeah. Oh wait, she's uh, come over later on if you have any pictures and videos, yeah, I'd love to see them. <laughs> What your favorite book was? I haven't read all the Harry Potter books. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've got an excuse. <laughs> I'm dyslexic, so that's my excuse. <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah, before Harry Potter, like, I'll tell you, I didn't know what Harry Potter was. I didn't know who Harry Potter was. I was completely, I didn't have a breeze. So when I got sent for the, uh, it wasn't an audition, it was my screen test. I went in and I walked straight past Dan, Rupert and Emma. I walked over to Chris, the director, and I was like, Hi Harry, nice to meet you. So I thought he was Harry Potter. But I think that's how I got the part. They were, they were looking for a stupid Irish guy. They got one right here. So like, yeah, I hadn't read them. And then I, when Harry Potter finished, I was like, you know what, I'm going to give these a go. Because it was so much easier for me to read them after watching the movies and knowing everything. Like reading the scripts were terrible for me because like, I couldn't do it. I'd have like different people reading it through with me the whole time. And yeah, so I've read up to the fifth one and I like the first... No, I like the fifth one probably the most. That was my favourite. How about you? What was your favourite? Probably Order of the Phoenix. Yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Edmonton, first of all. Thank you very much. Um, so I know the films went through a, f a few different directors. Um, how do you think that sort of affected the films overall? And was there a particular director you liked working with the most? I think it was good for the movies. I think every director kind of brought his own twist to it. Like Chris, for me, done an absolute fantastic job. He was just, he's one of my favorite people in the world. He's like a, he's like a father figure on set. He's a real family man. And he, he brought magic, like real magic to Harry Potter, to Hogwarts. And that's probably why the first movie is probably my favorite. And then Alfonso came on, this crazy Mexican director, and he was just so wild and wonderful and just so out there. <laughs> he is a, such a creative mind. And he wanted to kind of change a lot of different things. Like our costumes changed, our appearance all changed. He was saying, so what do you want your character to look like now? which was really, really cool, because Chris kind of had it in his head, hey, they've got to look like this, they've got to look like this. And he, between himself and J.K. Rowling, that's what they kind of settled on. 
And then as we were all getting older, like every teenager, you're going to change your style, you're going to change your appearance, everything like that. So I, I rocked in with uh, my rings on. And he was like, oh my god, I love your rings, I love your rings. I'm like, ah, oh, cheers, can I keep them? Can I wear them in the movie? I'm like, yeah, definitely. I soon regretted that because I <laughs> absolutely despised them come the fourth movie. And they wouldn't let me get rid of them. <coughs> and yeah, so I thought he done a fantastic job, like, making it appeal to a more like an older audience as well and then mike newell came in and done a great job and then david yates come on and just knocked it out of the park he just done such a, an amazing job and now he's doing the fantastic beast as well i think so that's going to be pretty cool having him directing it he, he was such a quiet man when he first came on set he was like so quiet and nobody could understand them he was like Ivana lynch when she started like nobody could understand them. they were that quiet so by the end of it he was like loud and we could all hear him uh, but he was such a lovely man as well he was so kind good thank you no problem they were all terrible <coughs> uh, i didn't like any i'm telling <laughs> you oh, lovely. how's it going man how's it going buddy hey uh so i i was gonna ask you about your patronus but uh i got another one for you uh what do you think uh seamus's job would have been after we all find out about Harry, Ron, Hermione. We know all their stuff. But uh, what do you think Seamus would have been doing with his, with his life after his time at Hogwarts? Okay, so originally I've always thought that Seamus flew over to Australia and he was working down in the mines, blowing shit up. Nice. <laughs> That's what I was convinced he was doing. And only recently I just found out that there is a wizarding school in Ireland. Oh, nice. Because I think it starts, it starts in Ireland, I think, in the new movie, like in the, the Fantastic Beast thing. I just read it online. It could be fake. But uh, it says like it starts off there and there's like a wizarding school in Ireland. So maybe he went there and like was a teacher maybe? Nice teaching. Or he could have gone off and like married Dean and yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I work in the mining industry so I'm, I'm all Sorry? I work in the mining industry so I'm all Alright. Uh, well there you go. I'll tell everyone. Seamus could have been there beside him. <laughs> right on, Thanks a lot. Cheers, buddy. Hello again, it's Hello again, yesterday. darling. Um so, obviously, you hear sometimes where you hear Tom or Daniel talking about how they still get in touch sometimes. And I was wondering if there's anyone that you've been in touch with from the movies or if you've had any big get-togethers or what it's kind of been for the cast as a whole. Yeah, like, it was hard when we all finished filming. Like, everybody went their own separate ways. I went back to Ireland. Different people went all the way around the world filming and just doing other stuff. So it was hard to kind of see each other. But like with Facebook and Snapchat and Twitter and all that kind of stuff, that's the only way we can really keep in contact. Unless we go to conventions like this, it's cool. Because like, I get to see uh, Nat who plays Tonks. I've seen her like probably like three or four weeks ago maybe. Oh yeah. Which is pretty cool. That's awesome. So like doing things like this, at least I'll be able to see a few more of them. But like yeah, I, I'm, I constantly like Snapchat them and send them tweets. And, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's just a shame that we don't get to see each other as often as we'd like. Maybe like we'll have like a ten year reunion or something like that. So we've done six so far. Only four years ago, maybe. Yeah. Alright. Awesome, thank you. No problem. Well oh, Jesus, that is right. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> okay, so mine's kind of like I guess like a deeper question. Um for you personally, what was your most emotional scene you had to do on set? Uh, the most emotional scene would have been Dumbledore's death. Simply because, like, it didn't affect any of us uh, going into it. We were like, yeah, yeah, it's going to mean nothing. It's just, we're just filming, we're acting. But we were all like, we're not, none of us are going to be able to cry. So we were saying, look, we need makeup to give us, like, they blow stuff into your eyes to kind of, like, make you cry, or they put stuff underneath. So with that, David Heyman heard that, and he was like, no, 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 guys, come over here. So he got all of us together and he was like, look, he started explaining things about Dumbledore and he's been with us so many years and all that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> we're like, fine, cool, we'll try. So with that, as soon as we were starting to film, it was like just crazy. It hit every single one of us. And that was really, really hard to film. With that was, yeah, that was the worst. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no problem. Okay, my question was literally just stolen, so I'm just gonna ask you that you're in. Do you yeah, play Pokemon spot, Go? Man. Sorry? Do you play Pokemon Go? No, I don't. Oh. Not so at all. Sorry? So disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so 
Oh, sorry. No, see, I'm, I'm up in the yard all day, every day. Like, I start probably like six or seven o'clock every morning, go up to the horses, and then I don't finish till like 10 o'clock at night. I guess that's fair. So my life is spent up riding horses all day. Okay, thank so you. I don't get a chance. I, I, did, I did download it, and I, I, I found there was like one Pikachu, I don't know, no, not one Pikachu. See, I don't even know what they're called. <laughs> I found like one Pokemon, which was Pikachu, in, yeah, right beside my barn. So I was like, cool, I got Pikachu. <laughs> and then I deleted it. I was like, oh, <laughs> um, do you like spiders? Yeah, I don't mind spiders at all. Okay, I don't remember what movie it was, but what was your opinion on the scene where um, Harry and Ron were running from the giant spiders? I thought that was cool, and poor Rupert was terrified of spiders. <laughs> like in real life, he is terrified. Same here. So, sorry? Same here. Oh, really? No, I, actually, I don't mind spiders at all. They're like, I can squish them if I want. I don't, but it's, I know that I can squish them. <laughs> I'm here there. So I don't mind. Uh, my fa one of my favourite scenes was when uh, Ron is having a nightmare and he's like, the spiders, the spiders, they're everywhere. That's one of my favourite scenes. Thank you. Okay, that light's brightness was not hyperbole. So anyway, my question is, what is the strangest experience you've ever had with a fan? <laughs> I cannot answer that because there's young kids here. <laughs> I've had a couple of nasty experiences, uh, but generally they've been pretty good. Over here, like, it's been great. Everybody here is really, really nice. I haven't got to see much of Edmonton, but the people have just been fantastic and they're not weird at all. <laughs> it's always a plus. <laughs> Sorry? They really are. Like, it's my first time coming over here. It's like, I was a Canadian virgin coming over. I've popped my cherry. And I'm just pissed off that I'm not here for long enough. I don't get to see a whole lot. Like, I've literally seen my hotel, the airport, and here. And a couple of bars and restaurants. <laughs> but... <laughs> the Hufflepuff of countries. Well, yeah, I, I can see that. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. I didn't even answer your question. <laughs> Speaking of the Hufflepuff of countries, what's... Okay, if uh, the houses of uh, Hogwarts were a political party, which one do you think would be which? And what would be the best? Sorry, say that again. Which would be what? <laughs> which... Uh, okay. Reflecting... Uh, okay, what... Uh, do you think uh, the houses of Hogwarts would be like if they were political parties? Uh, Slytherins would be dicks. <laughs> <laughs> they really would. Because I'm a dick. <laughs> and I'm a Slytherin. <laughs> but no, uh, geez, dude, I haven't a clue. I'm not politically up there. I don't care about politics. I just, yeah, I have no idea, dude. Sorry. Oh, uh, that's okay. I was wondering if you were allowed to keep anything from set, and if not, what's one thing you wish you could keep? Okay, well, if there's any cameras, I'm not gonna... I don't know. <laughs> okay, so, I was lucky enough, <clears throat> I got a few different things. On my 13th birthday, I was doing Wingardium Leviosa in Bang, and I got to keep my feather that I blew up. I got... I broke, like, so many wands. I, I've got the record on Harry Potter for the most ones broken, and he done it in, like, all eight movies. <laughs> and I done it in one day. <laughs> so, I got to keep half my wand. They're like, no, we can't keep the full thing. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> but no, I, I'd love to have my full wand. I'd love to have my uh, cloak. That'd be cool. I do have my the original tie, so before we got sorted into our house, we just have the Hogwarts crest on it. So I have that, I have the rings, I have the owl exams. I've got like a couple of different things that might have fallen into my bag. <laughs> <laughs> As well. Yes. They just fell in there. <laughs> like, I don't know how big things like that just fall in. <laughs> what? Falling. Warner was like Devon. 
Do I believe you have X, Y, and Z? No, I don't. There's video proof of you in X. No, we don't share. <laughs> <It's an expo. laughs> uh, but no, I, I, I was lucky enough to get a few things. I just really wish I had my cloak. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you. No problem. Hey there. How's it going? Good, you? I'm good. <laughs> good. So, um, if we, any of us, were going to go to Ireland, where would you say we should go from like an insider's perspective? Why would somebody from Canada want to go to Ireland? It's terrible. <laughs> it's beautiful. And in fairness, Ireland is, lovely. Ireland is a lovely place if it didn't rain all day, every day. <laughs> During the summer, like, we just had our summer and we had like 20 good days, if even. Uh, so, I'd say go to County Kerry, it's on the west coast. Okay. That's my favourite by far. I go there a couple of times a year. So you gotta do like the ring of Kerry. And you gotta make sure you go to Dingle. Okay. In Kerry. And somebody's been to Dingle. <laughs> oh my god. Have you seen Fungi? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Good job. Fungi is like you go into schools in Ireland and you ask them who the president of Ireland is and who Fungi is. None of the kids know who Michael D. Higgins is. They're like, no. But you say Fungi, like, oh my god, Fungi, I love Fungi! <laughs> so, like, everybody knows, and the day he died, like, he came into Ireland, like, he came into the harbour, like, 40 years ago, and hasn't left. So every day, there's, like, hundreds of boats go out on the tours, the Fungi tour, and he loves the boats. He just follows them around, and he does all his backflips and mad things, and he's just amazing. So the day he dies, it's going to be terrible. It's going to be, like, front page of every newspaper. It's going to just, yeah. The country's going to come to a stop. Moment of silence. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so there, Dublin is always good. Okay. It's dirty, but it's but it's good. but it's cool. Yeah, it's like every city really is always going to be kind of semi-dirty. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Cool. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. No problem. All right. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the young lady is our last question. Ah. <laughs> um. Can we not let the other two girls do it because they're already in the queue? Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Can't you know to him? Yes! <laughs> Which was your favourite movie to film? Uh, probably the first movie. The first and the last movie, because in the first movie we were all kids, we were all getting to know each other, everything was so much fun. And then from then on, it was a little bit more like work, but we were still having great fun. And then the last movie, it was kind of, we knew it was coming to an end, so we went wild. And we were all of legal age to go out and like have a few drinks, <laughs> which always helps. And yeah, like we just, the last movie was so much fun until the very end, like we knew it was coming. And they said, okay, look, we all finish on the 15th of August, say. So we we're like, okay, we all got prepared for that. And then we all said our, we all gave our each other hugs, kisses, goodbye, we we're all crying. And then two days later, they're like, okay, you all need to come back again for another two weeks. But like, oh, yes, yeah, amazing. And then we just went even wilder. And then. We've done the same thing, we all got really depressed and hugged each other and kissed each other and all cried. A day or two later, like, guys, you've got to come back for like another week. And I kind of got dragged out, but like every time they'd say that, like, we'd come back and go wilder. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, welcome to Canada, first of all. Thank you very um, much. And my question was, was it really, uh, how was it to actually act and try to get an education at the same time? So were you, because you were fairly young like 10, 11, so were you still like kind of studying at night and working during the day? Um, how was that? Yeah, so like we all had uh, private tutors on set, which for me was a hell of a lot better. Being dyslexic and being a mainstream school, at the time like nobody cared or helped you really. So having the tutor on set was just fantastic. We had to do like a minimum of three hours a day, a maximum of five hours a day. But in the beginning, what they used to do is they used to have like tick sheets. So every 15 minutes I'd like give a little tick. And one day I think I had, there was myself and Tom Felton, who played Malfoy, in the same class. And the tutor, I think he was the science teacher, and he had a, he was claustrophobic. And we were in like this small little room, so he kept on walking in and out. So we'd go off and like walk around the corridors for like five minutes. Myself and Tom would go over and like add on like six secretaries. <laughs> So we were always finishing early, like, we'd start at like 9 o'clock in the morning, by 10 o'clock they were like, oh they've done three hours already? <laughs> so they kind of clocked on pretty soon, and then it was just back to normal. I spent, the most I spent in school, 
I, I all together like during Harry Potter I spent probably like twenty or thirty days actually in normal school and the rest of the time was on set. So that was fun. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Um, I ride horses as well, so curiosity-wise, I was wondering um, if you have a favourite horse, and if so, could you tell me a bit about him or her? Okay, my favourite horse, uh, he was my very first horse, and I still have him. I bought him in... I, I, I done a movie called Angela's Ashes, <laughs> most depressing movie in the world, by the way. <laughs> but, uh, it's so good, though. It is, it's a real good movie. I was, I, I was doing a panel last week, and somebody said to me, like, just so you know, I'm not a big fan of Harry Potter, but... Uh, Angel's Ashes is my favourite comedy movie I've ever watched. <laughs> I was like, what? what? There's babies dying every day. They're constantly running through the rain. And like, they were genuine. She's got uh, a sick sense of humour. A real sick sense of humour. But yeah, so his name is Ashes. He's grey. I bought him as a three-year-old. Uh, he wasn't broken. So we had him broken and everything like that. He was just fantastic. He was scared of his own shadow. Like, ridiculous. Like, this horse, as like seven, eight year old, we were jumping on, at home, and like, he jumped courses all day long, like 150 at home. We'd bring him out, like, to little shows, and he would stop at that. Like, he would not jump. Anything different. So, it was a nightmare doing that. Going, trying to compete on him, so I had to buy a couple of other horses that I could actually go out competing on. But he's just, like, amazing. He tore, he done his uh, higher suspensory, like, two years ago. So I put him out for a while, he turned about on grass for a year. I think the hope it might heal. Because he's so old now, he's like 26 or 27 now. And we were like, look, we just put him out on grass. And then nothing, he didn't heal, it just got worse. But he's not in pain and he's just living life out in the field. He comes in at night and he's just happy out. Well, I'm glad he's doing better. Yeah, he's definitely the favourite. Like the yard, we call it the yard Ash Haven. Because it's Ashes Haven. <laughs> so, yeah. he's, he's the best. Thank you. Have a good uh, time in Canada. I will. Thank you very much, darling. <laughs> oh, wait. Hey, I thought they were clapping for that girl. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, thanks a million, guys, for coming here. I told you I was so socially awkward. You <laughs> did fine. I just, I probably didn't answer, like, anybody's questions. I kind of go off on my own. You did well. You did well. I answer my own questions. <laughs> don't drop No, I won't drop the mic. I really want to drop the mic now because you said don't drop it. Sure. No, I'm not going to drop it. Well, thank you so much for coming tonight. No problem. Thank you very much. I hope you all have a great time here.